When you're painting, probably no subject is more crucial to your success than being able to get the color that you want when you want it. That said, we're going to be using the color panel more often than not to get our colors. So let's go ahead and talk about what we find here. The very first thing that we find here is a ring. And as I go ahead and I click and I drag around this ring, you'll see that the color in this central square is changing. The reason why is because the currently selected spot on this ring is going to be considered the hue. And what's inside of that, the square here, is what's known as a hue slice. This is going to be going from desaturated to saturated and going from dark to light. Any ideas? Let's just simply click anywhere in the hue slice in order to get that particular color. You can see that this main chip here is going to be the color that we currently have selected. If I wanted to get a secondary color, what I can do is I can click on the second chip. It will switch it out. And you can see now I'm able to do the same thing. So now I can come over here and pick a completely different color. And I can easily switch between these simply by clicking that secondary swatch like so. Now, the idea here is that this is fine as far as quickly picking colors. However, if we want more precision, what we need is sliders. So I'm going to come over here to the context menu. I'm going to click that. I'm going to enable the sliders. And when I do that, you're going to see that we end up with hue, saturation, and lightness sliders. The idea of the hue slider is that as we move it, we're moving around the ring. And the idea of the saturation sliders, we're moving from the desaturated side of the square to the saturated side of the square as we increase the slider value. And then we also have down here at the bottom the lightness. And the idea here is that if we reduce the lightness, we're going to be going down into black. And as we increase the lightness, we're going to be going up to white. So you basically just move these three sliders to be in whatever position you want. And you can get very precise numeric control over your color by simply using these. Now that said, this is not the only way that we can work with color here in Rebel. We have a number of different widgets that we can use. So if I come over here to the flyout menu, you can see that currently we're using the widget type of circle. However, if we switch over to square, what we're going to see is that we get a very similar type of thing. Here we have a strip for our hues and we have our hue slice. So if I move this, you can see basically we're getting the exact same thing as we had before, just in a different arrangement. If I come over here and I look down below, you can see that currently we're set to hue. If I switch over to saturation, we're going to get a completely different result. Here, we're moving a slider from desaturated to saturated, and you can see how the square is changing. And here we would choose our hue as well as our lightness and our darkness. So you can see how that goes. And then down here we have the lightness option. So here we're going from the lightest values to the darkest values, and we're going to be choosing our hue and our saturation over here using this particular square. So the idea is, is you have a number of different modes that you can view here for the HSL. But we also have RGB. So if I choose RGB, now we're going to be viewing either red, green, or blue. Currently we're viewing the blue. So if I switch to the red, you can see we have a slider that controls the red component. If I come over here and I switch to green, you can see we have a slider that controls the green component. And then of course we were down at blue already and you can see that we're controlling the blue component. And of course we can click and drag within the square to get all the various different variations of that particular color. So the idea here is that you have a number of different modes that you can choose from. Now, more often than not, my feeling is you're probably going to want to stick with HSL and you're probably going to want to stick with the circle picker because that's going to be the most intuitive and it's going to work the best with the sliders. If you want to see sliders that are set to RGB, then what you can do is you can stay here with the circle picker and simply come over here and change from HSL to RGB. When you do that, you'll get RGB sliders, and this will allow you to enter RGB values if that's what you want. Now that said, I tend to stick with the HSL because it is a little bit more intuitive and it matches what we're getting here with our color picking widget. That said, if you don't like any of the options that Rebel offers you, what you can do is you can simply come over here to the main chip, click that, and this will launch the system color picker. Now on the PC, I don't find this to be any better than what we have over here in our context menu options. But on the Macintosh, you have many more options than what you have on the PC. So you may find that one of the system color pickers on the Mac may suit your preferences more than what you have over here in Rebel. However, on the PC, aside from being able to enter a hexadecimal value, there's really nothing all that valuable about working with this particular set of controls. So I would not recommend that you use the system color picker when you're on a Windows operating system.